Hello there, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? It's another paid request. This time for Gia. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, uh, whatever the case may be, video game stuff, random, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And now we have Death Note from 2017. I don't get the hate for this film. You know, I, I looked a little bit up on the movie before I saw it, and it got all these terrible, terrible reviews, just like a 4 point something on IMDb. It's not a flawless film. I'll say that I wish the film was longer. I wish there was about 20, 25 minutes longer to fully develop certain things and have things fleshed out a bit more. But as is, I thought this was a pretty damn decent film. I thought it was pretty entertaining. I think the score and the music was very uh, nice to listen to. I thought it had a pretty moody direction. I don't think the acting was too bad. I didn't mind the lead guy. Uh, I liked the little details. Adam Wingard, who I'm not a huge fan of because I hated his Blair Witch 2016 movie. I wasn't a fan of Khan vs. Godzilla, that movie. But this one, I like the little details. I like that the title shine almost. They're like John Carver's The Thing. Uh, songs they use, like Air Supplies, Power of Love, Berlin's Take My Breath Away, Chicago's Don't Want to Live Without Your Love. So I like the soundtrack usage. I like the musical score. Uh, the, the creature Ryut, voiced by Willem Dafoe. Nice choice for the voice. I like the look of the creature. It's all done practical. Maybe not the face, but... That's done well enough that I didn't notice it too much, and the body is practical. I think that looked really cool. I wish we could have seen more of, of that creature. He has some pretty good gore bits, practical gore. I thought this was pretty damn good. I just, I, I'm sorry if people disagree and they, if people get bad. I just don't see the bad, awful film that people say it is. Now, people don't ask, well, how much do you know about the anime? I've seen the first, maybe second episode, and to be perfectly honest, I don't remember how I felt about it. Whether I liked it or I hated it. I... They say, I don't even remember. So maybe that's why I'm not a diehard fan of Death Note. Maybe that's why. I remember the lead character not really caring because he was this OT intelligent, but he was like a sociopath that did face. And maybe that's why people were mad that this guy wasn't a sociopath that did face. So it's not true to the source. Well, to me, for me and my taste, this would be an upgrade. Because this guy, I liked a bit more. I understood a bit more of his plight. It was more cliche. Well, I like some cliches. What can I say? I know I don't think the fucking film is whitewashing. It's an American version of the film. It takes place in America. I mean, are we going to call it the Ring remake? We whitewashing? Does it got Naomi Watts? I mean, no, I don't think it's whitewashing. I'm sorry. Just some people have pissed off with about that stuff. It's like, okay, well, if they did, like, a Rambo film in Japan, I have a feeling they would probably cast a Japanese guy as Ram Rambo. This is in Japan. and Anyway. So it's about this pretty bright student, and he's beaten up by these bullies. He tries to help this person. He gets detention, and before he goes in, he finds his death note that falls from the sky. During detention, all this witness stuff starts blowing, and there's this creature, cool looking creature with red eyes, and this like porcupine stuff on, on the back, and granted the lead guy streaming a bit goofy, to have cut that out, but other than that, uh, I like the musical score, I thought it fit, I said the tiles pop up, and they remind me the shining through, kind of like John Carver's The Thing. Nice little nod to that. And I say the creature looks neat. Willem Dafoe is a good choice for the voice. 
and pretty much goads him into, hey, you got that thing. You just have to know a face, write a name down. And he sees that sociopathic bully who was fucked with him and is fucked with other people. And he's like, really? And then he writes this. You can't write how he dies. So he puts decapitation, and lo and behold, kind of like Final Destination, which people complain about that. I'm like, why is that a bad thing? If you're writing about how someone dies, wouldn't it ultimately be like Final Destination? Because you're pretty much being death, just like death in Final Destination. I don't know what the complaints of that are, and I thought they were really well done where this car swerves and this ladder comes up and decapitates the bully and the head fucking explodes and there's practical blood and, and gore. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, I'm liking this film so far, man. I don't... So the creature leaves for a bit. He'll pop up from time to time. I wish there was a lot more of this Ryu, which you find out is a death god. I wish there was a lot more of him. I wish there was a bit more of him, kind of like, what was that movie? Frank had a lot of brain damage. We see a lot more of Elmer, the creature, Godin, and, and messing with our lead character. I don't know how much he pops up in the anime, but as for the film, I wish we could have seen more of him. That's the thing. Usually I say movies should be shorter, but this film, if you take out the end credits, like 90-some minutes, I actually would have been fine if this was two hours and then some end credits. Just have a bit more Ryu, the Deaf God, have a bit more development on uh, the lead character's background with him and his father, who's a detective. A uh, little bit more on this other detective who's named L, which I'll get to. A little bit more development on him. If you... Because... It's one of those things like The Last Airbender, but I do not think this film is nearly, nearly, nearly as bad as The Last Airbender. I do not. Not by a goddamn landslide. But it's one of those things that's trying to put a lot of stuff into just a one movie. But yeah, I think there's like 20 minutes you could have fit in that the flesh wore things out. That's really one of my few issues with the film. And so now that he has this power, the next person he goes after is the guy who killed his mom. And he has this conversation with his dad before about, you know, the, the guy who killed mom is still out there and you're not doing anything about it and blah, blah, blah. I think that the guy wasn't too bad, wasn't too awful of an actor, the lead guy. Same with the guy who played his dad. I know I've seen that guy who played his dad before, but I, I don't remember which movie I saw him in. And so he writes in to kill the, the person that killed his mom and that guy dies and the movie goes on from there. He meets this woman named Mia, they fall in love, they start taking out criminals and as he puts it, because she kind of is kind of bitching going, oh, they're sheep. And he goes, no, no, they're not sheep. The people out there are looking for someone who won't be let down by the cops or the politicians. Almost as if he wants to be a punisher. And it kind of goes to the question of, like, me, if I had a death note, would I do something like this? Maybe I would. And so I could kind of see a little bit of myself in this lead guy. Again, there's a little bit more fleshing out in terms of writing that would light to have seen, but I see myself a bit in this guy and his decisions and maybe I would have done a bit more like this guy would have as well. Perhaps I would. But as I mean, I wish there was a bit more of the Ryu, the, the Willem Dafoe, I wish there was a bit more of that creature character kind of on his shoulder, goading him more and more. I think that would have been nice to have a bit more of that in there. So I'm going to get into spoilers. But, like I said, I like the usage of music. I like some of the moody direction of the film and some of the way the camera work and such were done. 
I thought the movie did go at a good pace. I never found it really that boring. Um, I like some of the developments of the, the plot. I like some of the quirky characters. Like the Detective L, I wasn't sure about at first, but I kind of grew to like his eccentric personality. The ending makes me mad because it leaves like all these threads dangling and I want to see more and apparently there are ideas to do a sequel but sadly everybody hated this film thus they cancelled it and now oh the the ooh, the guys are doing Stranger Things are doing great fuck Stranger Things I don't give a shit about Stranger Things are, are they going to make like 90 minute episodes too like fucking Stranger Things has gotten fuck Stranger Things I like this more than Stranger Things at least Okay, I don't mind the first season and parts of the second, but the other parts of season two, and afterward especially, fuck Stranger Things. I like this a lot more than season three, four, whatever the fuck, when they got to like two hour episodes, fuck that part of Stranger Things. I don't mind the first season, the second one, and after that, so oh, great, those guys gonna do it, whoopty fucking do, I'm not impressed give a shit people get pissed about that we all have our different opinions if you don't like this film teach their own guess what the world is still turning ain't no big deal we just agree to disagree so again more into spoilers I like that the the little montage of him doing the death scenes like he shows me the power of this death note and this robber goes out salutes and gets run over nice done effect practical effect and he shows her that he wrote that in the, the book this guy that had these hostages or he, they don't uh, pit torturers and terrorists and one guy electrocutes himself and makes his fucking head explode and another terrorist makes them all blow up in an explosion death roy mates are dying and they put this name Tira and even goes, in fact, people will think they're looking for a Japanese guy, so. Hopefully I'll be more in the clear. And in fact, they even have criminals turn themselves in, and and that's what I mean. Like, there's certain moments that needed more development. I would like to see more of the crowd of public loving Kira and praising him. And you get a little bit of that, but that need to be a bit more fleshed out. I didn't have a few more minutes of that fleshed out have like throughout the film six more minutes of Ryuk nudging, talking, messing with the lead character throughout it have about maybe four more minutes of people praising, talking about Kira, worshipping him have a bit more five, six more minutes of this Agent L investigating and maybe a little bit more of piecing some of these other clues together because Agent L is a guy who is brought in, who's very eccentric, loves candy. He has this handler named Watari. And he's such an eccentric thing where he's not sure about sleeping. So he has, literally has to put on these glasses and be kind of sun to sleep. And he's very smart, very good at it, but he's very eccentric. He's hiding his face and all this stuff. And you do get to learn a little bit more about that backstory with Ratari forcibly telling our lead character about a bit of the history of what happened. And maybe because, again, I'm not that familiar with the anime. I, I didn't mind some of the twists in there. For example, you find out that agents are being killed and this is the first time Kira has killed law enforcement, but the lead guy's confused, like, what the hell's going on? And he thinks it's Willem Dafoe's creature doing it, but then you kind of find out it's Mia who did it. And the lead character's horrified by that. And then your lead character's trying to stop Mia, but then Mia is consumed by this power. She even wrote the lead character's name in the book, and then he's got to figure out how to stop this. Same with, they were controlling the Batari guy, 
and he was going to rip it up and burn it. I'll tell you, you know what, your job's done. Because he didn't want the guy to die. He just wanted to find the name of this guy who's trying to fuck with him, this agent. But then Mia stole the page. And he's even warned the guy, run, just run. So the lead guy, is tr his character is trying. And that's the thing is that he doesn't want innocent people to die. He's even adamant to say, no, we're not going to kill any innocent people. And I did like the scene with him and Agent L in the diner. And them talking back and forth. I wish we could have seen even more of that. That's it. There's not many movies where I'm like, I, I want to see more. I would love to have seen a sequel. Just by the end of it, super spoilers. This is Ferris Wheel. And... He's trying to get Bia not to kill him. And it seems like everything's happy. But then she took the book. And he's horrified. Because he had written... If Mia takes the book, then this, this, and this will happen. He still tries to save her, even though she tried to kill him. You wrote my name in the book. Well, you wrote my name in the book first. And the Ferris wheel, like for a Netflix film, it's not that badly done. It's not everything finessed, special effects wise. But I've seen much, much worse. And like I said I like the the use of music. I like the use of Chicago's. Don't want to live without your love. <laughs> and the end of the film, I'm just so angry because there's so many of these dangling loose ends. Because he's in the hospital and before he kind of wrote this plan so that no one will think he's Tira because people are doing these, these killing of criminals even when he's in a coma. So people go, well, it can't be him. Agent L, of course, is not having it, so he gets kicked out. Agent L finds the, the book, and you're wondering, is he going to put this kid's name in it, or is he not? Because he did say he doesn't kill people, doesn't own a gun, but at the same time, he's so pissed off what's what, what's happening. And then, the our lead character wakes up, but you find out that the dad knows who he is. So now you think, okay, well, what's the dad going to do? Is the dad going to turn his son in? What else is the dad going to do? Is the agent going to write the, the kid's name in there or not? And then the lead kid turns, and there's Willem Dafoe. And Willem Dafoe laughs and goes, humans are so interesting. <laughs> I love the look of that creature. I, w I wanted to see more of that. I would love to see more like in a sequel. But Sally, people got fucking pissy. I even like the song, and I never heard of this song before, Air Supply's Power of Love. I know Huey Lewis' Power of Love, but I never heard of this song. I really liked this song. I really liked it. I guess, you know, it's a song from back then, but it's like, how the hell did I never hear of this song before? But I really do like this. So it was kind of cool to catch, like, a cla seemingly, like, classic 80s song that I had never heard of before. So, find something new every day, I guess. Like, I wanted to see more, so I think within the film, there's certain bits I wish were developed more. But I was enjoying the journey, I was enjoying the ride, I liked the gore sequences, I liked the music, I thought the acting wasn't too bad. Well, the foe was really cool, I wanted to see more of him and his creature. I liked the idea behind the film. I thought it was more palatable to me than for what I remember of the anime. Because the lead character was a sociopath that did face that was just unlikable. And maybe that's the point that people are like, well, you're not supposed to like them. And that's the point. Well, good for you. That's your point. Good. That's not my point. I, Yes, there are films you can watch and I can watch that you don't like the person, but it's interesting. I can get that sentiment, but I guess Death Note wasn't... I don't remember if I hated it. I, again, I only saw one or two episodes, so that's not fair to, to judge it, but... I don't think this was that bad of a fucking movie. I really don't. I really do not. This wasn't Dragon Ball Evolution to me. And I know the, the, the idea is, well, wait a minute, how come, you know, you were so mad in Dragon Ball Evolution that they cast the guy... And you say, well, this is an American version. <sighs> I 
I don't know, just one of those scenes where maybe because the actor is so shitty that I just find other things to fucking blame as well. Maybe because they try to have like Chow Yun Fat, they try to have the grandfather be Asian, but then other people aren't, and it's like at least here, you no, know, just make it all American. So they're a bit more consistent. It's not like the guy had an Asian father, but then the his son is white. And it's like, what the fuck? I don't know. I guess in this uh, arbitrary, maybe because I like the film better, so I'm able to overlook it more. I don't know, maybe it's just some other arbitrary reason. I don't know. Eyes of the Beholder. Take your pick. Hypocritical. I've always said we're all hypocrites. If I'm liking the film, I can overcome... St if I take two films, one I hate, I'll judge it more harshly because I think it's such an entertainment. This one in being entertained, so it's basically some of the stuff this other movie did, I'll let it go because I'm being entertained by the rest, so I can be more easier on certain faults or decisions. I don't know, man. I just don't think this film is that fucking bad. I really don't. So, yes, I would say... I do think the film is a bit underrated. Not a flawless film, but a bit underrated, yes. I don't hate the film, I'm sorry. If you do, teach their own. What can I say? I would love to have seen a sequel to this. I don't want no fucking Stranger Things. Well, the guys of Stranger Things are doing it. That's not a positive to me. That they're doing a... It has nothing to do with this. They're doing their own thing. To make the fans happy. Well, I hope... I hope you deal what you want. I hope you deal what you want. To Sally, I won't be doing what I want. A sequel to this, so... Hopefully you guys will be happy then. So there you go. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.